ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರನ್ ಚಾರಿ ಯಾಮುನ ಥೀರ ಮನ ಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲ ಬಾಗಿರಿ ಬರಧಾರಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಾಮುನ ಥೇರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗೋರಿ ಭೋ ಹರಿ ಭೋ ಹರಿ ಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗೋರ ಹರಿ ಭೋ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಪಾಯ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾಯಮಂದೆ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪುಸ್ತಾಯ ಭೂತಲೈ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನೀತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಭಗವತೆ 
भगवते वसुदेवाय We're reading Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. So we're hearing how Narada is searching for the devotee who has received the greatest mercy from Krishna. So we had, we were hearing uh, Anuman praising the Pandavas. Right, Hanuman was praising the Pandavas, and they both became ec ecstatic talking about the Pandavas. All right, Maharaj Parikshit is addressing Uttara. This Bhagavad, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita is a conversation between Maharaj Parikshit and Uttara. Uttara wanted to hear the essence of everything Maharaj Parikshit had heard from Sukadeva Goswami. So Maharaj Parikshit had some time left before he was going to leave the body and his mother Uttara had approached him and requested Maharaj Parikshit, her son, that you please tell me the essence of what you heard from Sukadeva Goswami. So, the, so Maharaj Parikshit was telling her how Narada and Hanuman were both dancing in ecstasy. So Hanuman becomes so ecstatic, he starts to speak to Lord Krishna. Although Lord Krishna was not physically manifest, but still Hanuman was speaking and he's addressing Krishna. He says, oh, master of all masters, you are conquered by your great affection for your devotees. This is how you attract their hearts. So this is Krishna. Lord Krishna is Bhaktavatsala. He's conquered by the pure love of his devotees. And Lord Krishna is always trying to please his devotees, like the Pandavas and Draupadi and like that. He's always their well-wisher. And they're also trying to please Krishna. So Hanuman said, it's my greatest fortune that Prita's middle son, Bhimasena, is also my dear younger brother. So both Hanuman and Bhimasena are the sons of Bayu, the wind god, right? Kunti, uh, Kunti had that ben benediction that she could invite demigods to come and they, could, they would come and give her a child. So Maharaj Yudhisthira was born by Dharma, Dharmaraj and Arjuna was born by the sun god. No, Arjuna was born by Indra. Indra. And uh, Karna was the sun god, right? Karna was the first one. But uh, Karna was before her marriage. And so it was after her marriage when she told her husband 
that she could invite demigods. Then her husband said, then do it. Call some demigods and have some, let's have some children. And so Bhima Sen, he's very powerful. And he's like Hanuman, they're brothers. So Hanuman appreciates that he has that good fortune that one of his brothers is one of the Pandavas. Hanuman says, Lord Krishna, by acts of friendship, like giving his sister in marriage to the Pandava Arjuna, showed Arjuna full mercy. And that Arjuna bears my image on the treasured flag of his chariot. So a couple of points there that Lord Krishna gave Subhadra to Arjuna for a wife. Actually, it was uh, a little bit of an intrigue because Balarama, he wanted to give Subhadra to Duryodhan. Subhadra was the son, but she was born in the womb of Rohini, one of Rohini's children. So she was very beautiful and she was a favorite of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna very much loved Subhadra. So Duryodhana wanted to marry Subhadra. But what happened was Arjuna, he disguised himself like a sadhu, like a holy man. And he pretended he was doing chaturmasya. He pretended he was fasting in Dwarka, outside Dwarka. And uh, they invited him to come and take food one time. And at, at that time he came, so he kidnapped Subhadra. He went off with Subhadra. And when he did that, then Lord Balaram was very angry. Because Lord Balaram, he was a friend of Duryodhana. And he wanted to give Subhadra to Duryodhana for a wife. But Arjuna had kidnapped Subhadra. And it was only Lord Krishna coming and touching the feet of Lord Balaram and asking Lord Balaram, please forgive him. No, I'm sorry, you know, we didn't. <laughs> like this. A, a, Lord Krishna came and got Lord Balaram to soften a bit and become merciful. And then so they agreed Arjuna could take Subhadra for his wife. And you see, when they were leaving the world, the, the two wives went with them. Of course, Arjuna had several wives. He had four wives. He had, first of all, Drupadi was one way, and then Subhadra, and then there was uh, Chitrangada, and the fourth one was Udupi, huh? Ulupi, Ulupi, right, Ulupi, right, Ulupi. So the Chitrangada, that was from Manipur, when he was up there in Manipur, from the king there. So I have four wives, a busy man. You must, must be an expert husband to keep four wives happy, right? Not an easy task. Anyway, uh, Lord Krishna certainly played a very important part in Arjuna getting the hand of Subhadra there. And Hanuman also mentions about how his image is on the flag of Arjuna. And that's described in the Bhagavad Gita. And the different Kshatriyas, they all have their different flags by which they identify themselves. Just like, you know, uh, Motor cars, they have their different insignias. You know, they have the Mercedes Benz signia and the Toyota signa and the OD signia. 
they, you can identify the cars from their different emblems. So Hanuman, his, his, his picture is on the flag of Arjuna's chariot. And it said that uh, Hanuman prays, uh, Arjuna prays to Hanuman that as you fought, as Hanuman fought so well on behalf of Lord Brahma, he prays that he can also fight on behalf of Lord Krishna in the battle of Kurukshetra. So Prabhupada said, this is the system that we should always seek the mercy of the previous Acharya. So Hanuman was the previous Acharya in fighting, in the warfare. It was Hanuman who fought and defeat, helped major part in defeating the army of Ravan. And so the same way Arjuna, he also prayed at the battle of Kurukshetra that he could become empowered to fight well on behalf of Lord Krishna. So, so Hanuman is appreciating how Lord Krishna is so much connected with him. Although Hanuman is Rambhata, but he knows Rama and Krishna, not really different. Anuman is proud to be on the flag of Arjuna. Without the unconditional mercy of the Lord's most beloved friends, a devotee's loving service can never succeed or bear fruit. Hanuman's ecstasy of Prima has awakened to such an extent that he feels he wants to go and see the Pandavas at once. And he's about to tell to Narada, we should go at once. But one can never become a servant of the Lord so easily. We can never enter into that rasa of dasya without the blessings of the devotee. So you want, we want to serve Krishna, we have to go through the, the spiritual master. Just like we were saying when it was Lord Balaram's Purnima, that the worship of Lord Balaram is very important because without worshiping Lord Balaram, you cannot get the mercy of Lord Krishna. You have to approach Krishna through Lord Balaram or Lord Balaram's representative. You cannot just go directly. Lord Krishna told uh, uh, Uddhava in Srimad Bhagavatam, he says that one who says he is my devotee, he is not my devotee. But if one is a devotee of my devotee, then he is my devotee. And we know also it says of all kinds of worship, the worship of Vishnu is the big, is the greatest. But even greater than the worship of Vishnu is the worship of those things in relationship to Vishnu. So we worship those objects, those persons in relationship to Vishnu. And Krishna tells Uddhava that we have to be the devotee of his devotee in order to be recognized by Krishna. You cannot just simply go to Krishna without going through his devotees. If we go to Krishna, he'll want to know who's recommending you. Who's, who's telling you? Who's presenting you? So Hanuman would, would induce. Hanuman wanted that Narada appreciate the Pandavas. Just like Lord Krishna bestowed his blessing on the Pandavas. 
So both Hanuman and Narada are both servants. They have that mood of being the servant. It's the same rasa. So just like the Pandavas, Hanuman and Narada should be able to go and see Krishna. So Hanuman says, never in Ayodhya did the Lord disclose what he now reveals in the district of Mathura, known as Dwarka. Here, Dwarka is described as part of the district of Mathura. Countless varieties of supreme opulence and sweetness, one after another, which Brahma, Rudra, and other demigods can hardly fathom. These glories expand the love of his devotees. So the, the special feature of Dwarka is being described, that it's very opulent, even more than Iodhya. Now, Ayodhya was also the kingdom, the palace. They had Lord Rama's palace was there, the palace of Maharaj Dasarath, then Lord Rama. So that was that was a palace. But even more opulent than Ayodhya is Dwarka. And in Dwarka, Lord Krishna is there with the goddess of fortune, Rukmini the Lord of Dwarka, Dwarka Dish. So all the demigods would, they would be amazed to see the opulence of Dwarka. The demigods, they're thinking they're enjoying heavenly opulence, but it was nothing compared to the beauty of Ayodhya. And Ayodhya was nothing compared to Dwarka. So the kingdom of God. So Lord Krishna, uh, he was displaying his pastimes as the Supreme Lord in Dwarka. But the mood, of course, the mood in Dwarka is mainly Dasya Ras. Because the Lord is there as the he's, the, he's the ruler, he's the king. So he enjoys opulence. And the more there is opulence, the more there is gap between the king and the citizens. Just like in England, they have a queen. They have a royal family. So the royal family, they don't go and mix with ordinary people. You know, they're, they're very special people. In India, they used to have many kings, right? Jaipur, was it? there was a king of Jaipur. And there was a king of Avantipur, just as Lord Rama is the king of Ayodhya. Mathura came later. It came when Satrugna came and killed the demon who was living in Mathura. And he established the kingdom of Mathura. So the kings, they enjoy, in some, in some extent they enjoy, but in some things they don't enjoy. One of the things they don't enjoy is being able to move freely in a relaxed atmosphere. Wherever they go, they have to take their security guards with them. 
you know, their officials will also accompany them. And before, the, before he will come any, anywhere, they will come and make sure everything is ready. I was in, I was in our London temple, and what happened was, at that time, there was a king in Nepal. Now, there's no more kings in Nepal, but at that time, this 1970s, there was, a there was a king, there was a royal family and like that in Nepal. So what happened was the son, the son of the ruler was coming to London to get some surgery. He needed some medical operation. And so they brought him to London and they wanted to come to the temple for darshan before they went for the surgery. So before the, before the, before the, this uh, prince came to the temple, first of all, the police came, detectives came, and they came and they said, you know, this royal family from Nepal are coming and they want to come to your temple. So you have to, is it ready? Is it all right? Are you ready for them to receive them? So, all right, yes, okay. <laughs> And so they, they came, you know, they wanted to get everything ready. Before the king comes, first of all, you know, the, the assistants will come. Make sure everything is in order for them to come. So like that, you know, the, the king, they, they cannot move so freely. They don't enjoy. They're not really relaxed. And so you find even Lord Rama... Sometimes he would disguise himself and he would go off into the kingdom and he would like to move around. And in this way, he could also find out what people thought about him. And Lord Rama actually employed people to do that. He, in, he employed some spies that they would go out every day and they would go around the kingdom and find out what people are saying. So, uh, this, the, of course, this led to Lord Rama sending Mother Sita away because of this, because he listened to everyone. Nowadays, they don't care what people say. Yeah? They couldn't care. All right, so being the kings, there's... There, they enjoy opulence, but they in, the, the, there's difference, there's separation. They're not able to be relaxed or to be, they don't enjoy the sweetness which is there. So that is the difference between Mathura and Ayodhya, or Vrindavan and Ayodhya. In Ayodhya, there's only veneration, awe and reverence. And in Dwarka also, then awe and veneration is also there. But in Vrindavan, it's sweetness, it's madhurya. And Krishna is very relaxed, very, he enjoys, every, nobody's bowing down to Krishna. Everybody's, you know, they're playing with Krishna and uh, they're sometimes stealing his food, and Mother Yashoda ties up Krishna. And you know, it's a whole different mood. But in Ayodhya and Mathura, it's different. You know, oh Krishna, oh Krishna, oh, and a lot of respect. And we see Hanuman, Hanuman's kneeling beside Lord Ram, waiting for the orders, what should, how I can serve, what can I do? So we'll hear actually Hanuman, he will say, when, when Narada says, let's go to the Pandavas, let's go and see the Pandavas, or let's go to Mathura and see what's going, let's go and see Krishna in Mathura or Dwarka. Hanuman will say, no, oh, just a minute. He's not ready to go. He's not ready to go to Vrindavan anyway. Although Vrindavan is supreme. 
he said, Vrindavan, he said, he said, I might commit some offenses if I go to Vrindavan. Because in Vrindavan, they're all enjoying the, the rasas. They're, they're, they're just playing with Krishna. They're friends with Krishna. And they're climbing on Krishna's back, doing so many things. But Hanuman, Hanuman he cannot, th this is not his mood. His mood is veneration. Just like when we serve the deities, we worship the deities with awe and reverence. We worship them in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan. Now some other people, they will worship the deity in a different mood. Just like there was this one devotee, Raghunandan, Raghunandan Thakur. He was a young boy. So they had a, they have the de, they had the deity in their family. His father was also a devotee. Raghunandan's father was uh, what's the name? Raghunandan's father. Uh, he was also one of the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And anyway, he was a doctor, he was a physician. There was Narahari and Murari. Murari, Murari he was a, a physician, doctor. And so, uh, and Raghunandan was his son. And so the father said, I have to go out today. You have to make the offering. So the young boy said, yes, father, I will make the offering. So when the father had gone, the boy went to make the offering to the deity. And he was ringing the bell and chanting the prayers, and, but the deity was not eating. So the boy became worried. He thought, you know, you should eat. Please eat. Take prasadam. Gopal, please take prasadam. And the deity was not eating. So the boy became very frustrated, became very anxious. And he was pleading, pleading to the deity, please eat, please don't be shy. If you don't eat, father will not be happy. You please take prasadam, take your food. And so the deity ate. And so Raghunandan was happy. So that night his father came back and he asked his son, did you make the offering? And the boy said, yes, father. So father said, give me some prasadam. But the boy said, there's no prasadam. Father said, what, you, you ate everything? He said, no, Krishna ate everything. And so father said, oh, Krishna ate everything, did he? Father was surprised and he thought, my son, he never tells any lies. He would never lie to me. What happened? So he thought, I will have to investigate this. So he told us next day, he told son again, you make the offering again today. We saw that the boy was making the offering and father was hiding and he was watching. And he saw Raghunandan, he's ringing the bell, he's telling him, eat, eat, eat. So Krishna came, started to eat. And Marari was, oh, he was watching. He saw the deity was eating and he understood, oh, my son is really a great devotee. So they were great devotees. You can go there, that deity is still there. The deity which at the sweet bowl, you can see the deity. That's not very big, small deity of Krishna. But he was eating. Raghunandan, great devotee, Lord Chaitanya told him, you just worship the deity, you don't have to do anything else. Oh, it's uh, Srikanda, yeah, right. Not far from Katwa. If you go to Katwa, it's about three kilometers. Yeah. So you can go to Katwa at the same time, and then you can go to Srikanda, and you can see the temple there. Very nicely maintained. 
nice maintenance. The temple's clean and well painted and everything. And still doing the puja there. So quite a lot of deities, so <laughs> many deities there now. So Raghunandan. He got Krishna to eat. So Narada says, what are you saying? Narada Muni says to Hanuman, what are you saying? Something unseen in Ayodhya? It's not seen even in Vaikuntha? Get up, get up, my friend. We should go there at once. So Narada is ready to go to Dwarka or to the Pandavas capital, Hastinapur. Both are good. With the, in, with the interjection, Narada gives voice to distress at not having seen such splendor in Ayodhya or in Vaikuntha. And with the repeated request, he, he expresses his eagerness to go. Then Maharaj Pariksha says, Hanuman, the ocean of sobriety, then sighed for a moment. And after a brief time in thought, he bowed down to Narada and spoke. So Hanuman's very loyal to Lord Ramachandra. He cannot think of doing anything away from Lord Ramachandra. So he's, Hanuman thinks, if I go running off to Dwarka, then he'd have to leave his deity because Hanuman is worshipping his deity of Lord Ramachandra. Hanuman, uh, Narada had come to this Kimpurusha Loka where Hanuman's living today. And Hanuman is worshipping Lord Rama there. So Narada was telling him, we should go to Dwarka or Hastinapur, go and see the Pandavas. But Hanuman is thinking, well, just a minute, you know, I, I can't just go and leave Lord Ramachandra. Because he is worshipped, he understands the deity is Lord Ramachandra. He's not thinking it's only the deity, he's actually thinking this is Lord Ramachandra. He's there. The, the deity is Lord Rama. That is real deity worship. When we actually see Krishna directly there. So the pujaris, we say they're the most fortunate because they're directly serving Lord Krishna or Lord Rama or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Lord Jagannath. Whichever deity you're serving, you should understand this is the Lord Himself who's come in the deity form. So Hanuman said, certainly it would be fitting for us to visit Dwarka to see the Pandavas and offer them service, for they are in all respects most dear to Krishna and His consort. But the Lord is now displaying uncommon, intense mercy and sweetness, more confidential than anything he has ever shown before. Those wonderful, playful pastimes are so supremely enchanting that they bewilder even self-realized sages. Even self-realized sages for example, Lord Brahma became bewildered when he saw Krishna's pastimes. Lord Brahma came and he saw Krishna sitting in the fields on the bank of the Yamuna, and he, Lord Krishna's holding the rice and yogurt in his left hand, and he's sitting, you know, with all the cowherd boys are taking their, their prasadam together, and Lord Brahma's watching, he's thinking, this is my Supreme Lord and Master. It was very difficult for Lord Brahma to understand how could this little child who's sitting eating yogurt and rice with his left hand 
how could he be my supreme lord and master? So that was when Brahma went and stole the cows and the cowherd boys. Then he really became bewildered after he did that. And so Krishna was bewildering people. We know Indra became bewildered. Indra sent Sambhartaka clouds to annihilate Vrindavan because he didn't get his Indra Yagya. And he was criticizing that Krishna is a talkative child. It's like this, Indra became bewildered. Brahma became bewildered. Lord Shiva fought with Krishna more than once. And then Indra tried to stop Krishna taking the Parijata tree from heaven. Different times, different demigods. Varuna had arrested Nanda Maharaj and Krishna had to go into the, into, go and tell Varuna to release Nanda Maharaj. And then uh, Kuvera's sons, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva. So, so many examples of their different demigods, how they were offending Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna's bewildering them by his pastimes. And the most bewildering of all of his pastimes is Rasa Lila, because Krishna can expand himself unlimitedly to dance with each and every one of the gopis. And they dance for a night of Brahma. So Lord Krishna's pastimes are so bewildering that even great sages cannot understand them. We have the, the four Kumaras wanted to enter into Rasa Lila. Lord Shiva, Narada Muni, they also wanted to be in Rasa Lila. The personified Vedas, they wanted to be in Rasa Lila. And Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, even she wants to enter Rasalila. When Lord Chaitanya was in Trichy, he was staying at the home of Venkatabhata, who was the puja, one of the priests in the Sri Rangam temple. So they were talking about the difference between the Sri Vaishnava and the Gaudiya Vaishnava. So Lord Chaitanya asked Venkatabhata, that why do you worship Lakshmi and Narayan? That this Lakshmi, she wants to enter into Rasa Lila. And Venkatabhata was saying, no, she's the most chaste woman. And he was saying, Actually, there's no difference between Vishnu and Krishna. He said, they're the same. There's no difference. And there's no difference. The goddess of fortune and Radha, they're the same. But Lord Chaitanya said, well, if there's no difference, then why the goddess of fortune cannot get into Rasa Lila? That the goddess of fortune, if she's the consort of the Lord, why doesn't she dance in Rasa Lila? But she cannot. She cannot get into Rasa Lila. The Lord doesn't allow her. She comes and she does austerities and she tries to get into Rasa Lila, but she cannot. Because to get into Rasa Lila, you have to take birth in the family of the gopis. You have to become a gopi. You cannot just do austerities and get into Rasa Lila. You have to actually take birth as a gopi. So the goddess of fortune, she doesn't want to do that. You know, she's the goddess of fortune. She doesn't like to collect cow dung, make cow dung patties. 
like the cowherd women do. She wants a blessing to the bridge bhattis, but she cannot get Rasalila. And it said Narada, he became Naradi. He became a gopi, Naradi, and he went into Rasalila. And Lord Shiva, he also took bath in the kund and came out in a gopi form and went off to Rasalila. But Lord Krishna detected. Oh, who's this gopi? I never saw this gopi before. Where are you from? Which place are you from? And so Lord Krishna gave a special place to Lord Shiva. He made him Gopeshwara, the controller of the gopi. So he, there's a deity, there's a Shiva Linga there in Vrindavan, which is Gopeshwar Mahadev. Where, and they dress the, the uh, Shivalinga as a gopi in commemoration of Lord Shiva going to Rasalila. So these are all bewildering pastimes, Krishna's bewildering pastimes. We want to understand Krishna's pastimes, we have to hear them from the beginning. We have to hear about his pastime of creation how he creates a whole material world, the Shristi Lila, how the Lord does the work of creation. It's important to hear these past, these kind of Lilas. Then you become more qualified to understand the more inconceivable pastimes, like Rasa Lila, which is the perfection of all the Lord's pastimes. So the Lord enjoys his pastimes for it's for him and his devotees, the different devotees, these very pure gopis, they come to be with Krishna. And there are there are different groups like the the personified Vedas. The personified Vedas thought they could just go straight into Rasa Lila, but no, they had to take birth in the family of the coward. And similarly, the sages who had met Lord Ramachandra, the sages had met Lord Ramachandra in the Dandakaranya, and they had wanted to have a conjugal pastime with Lord Ramachandra. They were attracted to Lord Ramachandra. But Lord Ramachandra told them, I have vowed in this life, I will only have one wife. I will not marry again. So you want to have, you want to enjoy conjugal pastimes with me, you come in my next incarnation when I will appear in Vrindavan. And at that time you should take birth in the family of the cowherd people. So all the sages, the great sages from Dandakaranya who wanted that rasa with Lord Rama, they came, they took birth in the cowherd family. So they were not ordinary women. You know, we think, oh, cowherd people, oh, low class. You don't understand who were these people? Who were these gopis? Of course, Prabhupada also says, he said, a few hundred years ago, you know, he said, people in the villages, they were opulent. They were the wealthiest people. Nowadays, you know, it, it's like the opposite. It's, everything is perverted. In the villages, people all dressed in dirty clothes and they have no jewelry and so on. And they're very poor. But hundreds of years ago, it wasn't like that. The people in the villages, they were the opulent ones and they had the nice clothes and they had the jewels and they had all, all the nice ornaments and everything. And so Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, they were very wealthy people. They had nine lakh cows. They were not thinking, oh, how to feed them. No, there was so much grass everywhere for the cows to eat. It was not a problem. So we don't understand what is the real beauty of the 
the village life, the rural life. But in the times of Lord Krishna, that was the place to live. That was nice. So Lord Krishna, he was revealing that to people by his pastimes in Braja. He was showing the beauty of Vrindavan. Lord Krishna decorated with peacock feather and with the different gunjamala, the forest flowers, everything which is local. He didn't have to import anything from far away. It was all right there in the forest. It was just laying there, waiting to be used. And Lord Krishna, he decorates himself with all these things, all the treasures of Vrindavan. So Lord Krishna is performing his pastimes there in Mathura and bewildering the minds of all of the people. So Hanuman is, he's cautious, he just wants to, he, he doesn't want to get too close. He's worried what might happen if he gets too close. So we say, don't get too close, but don't get too far away. If we get too close, we might become offensive. And if we're too far away, then we'll fall down into maya, we'll completely forget. So it's important to stay connected, don't go too far away. Oh. Just see how even our father Brahma, grandfather of the world, Founder Acharya of the Vedic teachings was confused by the pastimes of Krishna. So what can be said about foolish fo forest monkeys like me because of how strangely Krishna's pastimes unfold, I am afraid of committing offenses. So this is Hanuman saying he's afraid, he said, the Krishna's pastimes are so bewildering and there's so much familiarity there with Krishna. For Hanuman, it will be very difficult. He said, I'm afraid if I go there, I just won't know how to properly behave. So better I don't go. Hanuman saying like that. Anyway, he has Lord Rama there with him in the form of the deity. Just like uh, in Chaitanya Leela, when Lord Chaitanya was going to go to South India, Gadarhar wanted to go with him. Now Gadarhar, he's like Radharani, expansion of Radharani in Chaitanya Leela. And he wants to go with Lord Chaitanya. He was very attached to Lord Chaitanya. He always wanted to be with Mahaprabhu. So, Lord Chaitanya is going to South India, but Lord Chaitanya won't let him go. Lord Chaitanya said, no, you have to stay here because you've made a vow, Shetra Sanyas. You made the vow that you would stay in the Holy Dham. It's a type of Sanyas that you vow to stay in the Holy Dham and not to leave, called Shetra Sanyas. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said it's a very convenient form of sannyas for the Kali Yuga because for most people it's not so easy for them to go out from the home and to leave their family. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he was like Shetra sannyas. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was also living in Jagannath Puri his last days. So, Gadarhar. He had come from Mayapur, Lord Chaitanya, he'd taken sannyas at Kadwa, and then he'd come to live in Jagannath Puri, and Gadarhar had come with him. And Gadarhar took the vow to remain there in Jagannath Puri. So Lord Chaitanya gave him the deity of Gopina, 
Tota Gopina, very wonderful deity. So he was supposed to worship this deity. Lord Chaitanya had personally given him this deity of Gopina. And he told Gadara, you worship this because you're going to stay here in Jagannath Puri, so you worship this deity. But then when Lord Chaitanya is going to, to go to South India, yeah, Gadara said, I want to come with you. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, you made a vow. You vowed you're going to stay in the Holy Dham. And you have the deity to worship. You cannot just leave your deity. But Gadara is saying, no, you are Krishna. You are the Lord himself. Wherever you go, that's a holy place. Gadara was arguing. He didn't want to leave. He just wanted to follow Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya would not allow him. He said, no, you have to stay. You should stay. So Hanuman is fixed. Lord Chaitanya liked to see devotees very fixed in their service, that they were very steady. Lord Chaitanya liked to see that. He didn't like to see them give up one service and go some other place whimsically. He liked to see the devotees fixed. And so he was chastising Gadarhar. The Gadarha was so attached to Lord Chaitanya, he couldn't bear the separation. It was unbearable. Finally, Lord Chaitanya got in a boat and crossed the river. And when Lord Chaitanya got in the boat and left, Gadarha fainted, unconscious. He couldn't bear the separation from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when Lord Chaitanya left the world, after Lord Chaitanya left the world, then Gadarha also departed. Not long. Gadarha couldn't stay in the world without Lord Chaitanya. And you see, Swarup Damodar, he also left the world. Gadarha, he left the world. They all left quickly after Lord Chaitanya departed from the world. They saw Lord Chaitanya finished his pastimes. They also didn't want to stay. They left the world. But Hanuman, he stays because Lord Ramachandra asked him, you stay here and show the example for the conditioned souls. Show them how to be devotee, how to serve in separation. Just like the gopis, they served in separation and Mother Yashoda Nanda Maharaj, they also serve in separation. That service in separation, that is the intense mood of devotion. When we feel the separation from Krishna. They made a drawing book. They, they did this pic, it was a coloring book for children, and they had a then they, they but they made some mistakes. And Prabhupada saw it, said, What? There was a picture and it said, Krishna is sitting by the tree. And Prabhupada said, no, this is not how it should be. It should be, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? When will Krishna come? He said, we don't have the mood that Krishna, we see Krishna, but we want the mood of when will we see Krishna? We should be anxious. We should have this mood of separation. Vipralamba Seva. This is the mood of the gopis. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of his associates, they cultivated that mood. They didn't say, now I'm seeing Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying, where is Krishna? When will Krishna come? That was the mood of Lord Chaitanya. So we want to cultivate that kind of mood. Okay? Hare Krishna. Any question? Any comment? Yes?
हरे कृष्णा महाराज इन पंडारापुर धाम सिमिलर पास्ट टाइम आई हर्ड आल्सो टू प्लेस बिटवीन दी ब्राह्मणास बॉय एंड डी टी लॉर्ड विठला वेर वेन ब्राह्मणा बॉय सॉरी वेन दी ब्राह्मणा वेंट आउट एंड टोल्ड द सन टू ऑफर द टू ऑफर दी नैवेद्यम इन भोगा टू लॉर्ड विठला ही ऑल्सो डिट द सेम थिंग ultimately lord vithala also ate and father was bewildered and he also saw hiding i have heard this past time also in pandrapur dham maharaj pandar pandarpu lord vithala mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know the lilas in pandarpur you'd have to ask lokana swami but this Raghunandan's deity, his pastime. This is from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, so it's recorded in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how this Raghunandan, how he could get the deity of Krishna to eat. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, maybe other. There may be other. There must be other deities also that eat. They're controlled by pure love and devotion. Just like the Shakshi Gopal deity could walk and be the witness, and the Shira Kora Gopinath deity could steal the sweet rice to give to Madhavendra Puri. And so also, Krishna can eat the offering. The offerings are. They can be eaten. But if you get upset because Krishna eats, that's not good, right? We should be happy that Krishna is eating. Some people think, well, why is he eating? He's only a deity. He shouldn't, you know, some foolish people, they think like that. They think, oh, you're only a deity. Why are you eating? No, we should be happy that Krishna is eating. Krishna is controlled by pure love. And where there is pure love, then Krishna will accept the offering. Ashnami prayatatmanaha. Right? Krishna eats. But he wants that love. There must be that pure love. So, Raghunandan, he had that kind of love. He could control Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.
Hare Krishna devotees, that out pranam. I will end the Zoom session. We will meet again tomorrow. Hare Krishna, that out pranam devotees. Hare Krishna, that out pranam devotees.